Eli, we've been talking about the mystery of praise. Discovering how praise and worship unto the Lord, the true and living God, Yeshua, releases healing and deliverance. So today what we're going to talk about is a reason to praise Him. As a subtopic, the reason for praising Him because God told me to tell you because I'm doing something. He said, your reason for praising me because I am doing something new. He said, he's doing something new on the inside of us. But before I go into the topic, I want you to first turn your Bibles to 2 Corinthians, the 11th chapter. When you look at 2 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, we got to be mindful because God said, there's a spirit that's preaching another Jesus. And with this other Jesus, it's a false doctrine that's being preached. And people are being hoodwinked. They're being fooled about this other doctrine. Because everybody that got a church, everybody that got a cross on it, don't mean that it's a church of Jesus Christ. You got to understand that enemy has released a lot of counterfeits on the earth. And God said that a lot of people are preaching another Jesus. So when you look at verse uh, uh, 2 Corinthians 11, let's look at verse 2. This is Paul talking. He said, for I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. He said, for I have been espoused to you, one husband, that I may present you as a chastened virgin to Christ. He said, but I fear, lest by any, any means, as the serpent beguiled evil through his sorcery, so your mind should be corrupt from the simplicity that is in Christ. He said, for it is come preach another Jesus whom we have not preached. If you receive another spirit which you have not received or another gospel which you have not accepted, you might as well bear with him. For I suppose I was not with behind the very chief apostles. So in other words, I want to read that to you in American standard. Verse 2, he said, for I am jealous for you with a godly jealousy. For I have betrothed you to one husband, so that Christ I may present to you as a pure virgin. But I am afraid that as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, your minds will be led astray from the simplicity and the purity of devotion to Christ. For if, for if one comes preaching another Jesus, whom you have not preached, or you receive a different spirit which you have not received, or another gospel which you have not accepted, you bear this beautifully. For I consider myself not in the least inferior to the most impotent apostles, but even I am unskilled in speech, yet I am not in knowledge. He said, in fact, every way we have made this evident to you in all things, or did I commit to a sin, humbling myself so that you may be exalted, because I preach the gospel of God to you without a charge. So he's saying that there's people telling people, God is going to bless you with all these blessings. God is going to give you these homes and these cars. And you still living like the devil. You don't have no change. You don't honor God. You don't respect God. You don't have no fear of God. You're not reading. You're not studying. Your life is not changed. But these people are telling you all these blessings is coming. He said that's another gospel. He said, that's not what I've been teaching you. And this is what I'm always telling y'all. Read the scriptures. Because when people tell you you can live like the devil. And yet all these blessings coming. Yet here it is. You don't know the word. You don't know the difference between what's real and what's not real. Only thing you know that my blessing coming. Only thing you know that God got me. Only thing you know God got my heart. But you got to understand that's another gospel. It's another gospel. And we got to understand, we got even as we're talking about praise, you got to understand some church and preachers just praise God. But we got to understand, you ain't just praising God just to praise God. You got to praise God and be intentional while you praise God. You got to praise God because you understand you're praising or acknowledging who He is. Not based on your feelings, not based on your flesh. I could be mad, I could be going through, I could be hurt, but I'm commanding my body. Let everything that, that has breath praise ye the Lord because I'm not doing it for my flesh. I'm doing it because I know who he is. And so you got people praising God based on their feelings. They're praising God based on the prophecy. They're praising God based on their emotions. And God said, you praise me, you're supposed to 
covenant of knowledge who I am because I am your God. He said, it's where you are his witnesses. I want you to turn your Bibles to Isaiah 43. You got to understand God has summoned us. God been bragging on us, saying this, my children. It's one thing, you know, I remember when my children was in the band, when Rick was playing the drum, I said, oh, that's my son, that's my son. My daughter was a major, that's my daughter, that's my daughter. That's one thing that a parent likes to see, is when their child is doing something, they begin to brag on their child. You calling out that name. You want everybody to know that's mine, that's mine, that's mine. That's who I'm proud of. And you got to understand, if you going to praise God, you got to understand the reason why you praise God. So let's look at Isaiah 43. Because we can't go based on your feeling. Because we've been limiting our praise on feelings. And God saying, no, 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 no. I need you to go beyond your feelings. He said, here, I, I, I want you to these are some nuggets that you got to understand. He said that when you're praying to God, you got to know your father. You got to go beyond all the odds. You got to know that all the odds are stacked against you. Come on here. You cannot tell you all the odds are stacked against you as a child of God. God, Jesus told them when he's sending them out in the world, he said, I'm sending you out as sheep amongst wolves. So he's telling you, you're going to be around people who ain't going to like you, people who ain't going to stand you, people who going to talk about you, people who going to try to hurt you. It's going to look like you got more of them than it is you. He said, I'm sending you out because you got to understand when you're praising God, you pray, your praise is causing angels to fight on your behalf. So you already got to have it out in your mind that the odds are stacked against me. What does that mean? That you going into a place where it looks like you ain't going to win. You in the midst of a situation and it looks like you're going to always be defeated. It looks like you go in a family and it looks like you're the black sheep of the family. Everybody want to talk about you. Everybody want to put their mouth on you. Everybody want to say you ain't no good. Everybody want to say you just like your daddy. Everybody say you just like your mama. The all are a stack against you. And God got it that way. He said that's why you got to pray them because you're around the very people that are putting their mouth on you speaking that you ain't going to make it. Then the very people putting their mouth on you saying you're going to lose your mind. Then the very people who go to the church and some people, the very people who's going to be cheering you on, then the very ones that pray for your downfall. So God, I'm trying to tell you, you praise me for a reason because I'm going to use the praise of God. You don't even know your praise is called the elders to be released to the joker. Your praise is called the thing to be talked around for you. Your praise Because all the odds are going to be stacked against you. He said, You got to move beyond your haters. There's a song saying, I got a two steps for my haters. I love your question. You got to understand, we've been crying about the haters, but God said, I'm going to let them haters make you who you are. Come on, yeah. I'm going to let them haters, because them haters going to push you to pray. Them haters going to push you to get down on your knees. Them haters going to get you to turn down that play. Them haters going to get you to get to a place and God. We need the haters. Did you hear me? You need the haters. Because think about this action. If everything was good, would you pray as much? If everything was good, would you study as much? No, we wouldn't. So God is using them haters for a reason. So you got to understand when they start putting their mouth on you, God said, I'm using them for a purpose. He said, because your haters is pushing you to go into a praise. He said, this is where you got to move beyond your human understanding. Write that down. You got to move beyond your thoughts. You got to move beyond your feelings. You got to move beyond your emotions. Because your emotions will make you have a pity party. Your emotions will make you feel sorry for yourself. Your emotions will make you feel like it's too much for you. He said, you got to move beyond human understanding because it will not make sense to your intellect. He said, God has it stacked like this because God said, I'm going to blow your mind. He told me, I need your imagination. This is what some of y'all, we ain't been using our imagination. God said, I need your imagination. Some of us need to put our imagination on the altar because your imagination is polluted. You need to get into the Word so the Word of God can purify your mind. 
the word to purify which God wants to show you. He said because he need to put the right image. The root word in imagination is image. God said I got to put the right image in your mind so that you can see things the way that I want to, I want to show you. He said, this is where I'm going to teach you a reason for praying to him is you're going to have to let go of what happened in the past in order to get a new image. Because if you don't let go of what's in the past, what's in the past is going to keep speaking for you. And he said, I've got to give you the new image so you can put your mind on the new image. Because as the new image is being put in your mind, it's going to give you a new outlook and a new perspective on what God is doing. So when we look at Isaiah 43... This is the reason why God wants to show you he's going to do something new. So when you look at verse 1, he said, But now, thus says the Lord, your creator, O Jacob, and he who formed you, Israel, he said, Fear not, for I have redeemed thee. Underline that word redeemed. Redeemed means he have bought you. In other words, when Jesus was on the cross, write this down. He became a curse that you can be free. What does that mean, Apostle? He became sick that you become well. He became poverty that you can be wealthy. He became a bondage that you can be set free. He became a curse. Because in biblical times, everybody who hung on the tree was cursed. That's why it was symbolic for Jesus to be on the tree. So the scripture say in Galatians, cursed is every man that hang on the tree. So when you see Jesus on the tree, he's reminded you that I came a curse that you can be healed. I came a curse that you can be away when you can be wealthy. I came a curse that you can be delivered. So you got to understand, he said, I already paid the price. It's like you up here in the pink and wiggly, and you get to the, the cashier, and she said, the person ahead of you already paid for your grocery. You may say, well, they don't even know. She said, well, when you were standing back, I was already looking at your stuff, and I was already adding up. They already paid for it. Mm. That's what Jesus did for you. But because sometimes we don't know what he did for us, we walking around holding on to stuff he already paid for. You walk around and don't even know he paid for you to be healed. And you walk around here sick. You walk around, some people walk around here broke. Don't understand he paid the price for you already to be wealthy, but you just don't know it. Y'all ain't never been walking around sitting there. There was a time in my life I didn't realize that my insurance paid for vision. And I don't want to pay the people the money at the vision place. Now they understand that I had the benefits for the iron. And God is saying, that's how we are. When you don't, can I tell you, God, let's read. He can't, he couldn't give me, I had the insurance, I was already covered, but because I didn't know my benefits, I didn't know I was covered, so I ended up paying for something that I was already covered for. And he said something, we already, we already covered for a lot of stuff, but because we don't know, and he said, I can't be what you need me to be because you don't know the benefits of under this package. So right here, so he says, so he says, so fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. So he called me by my name. He said, because you are mine. Do you not know that God is jealous of you? I just showed you what Paul was saying. God is jealous of you. He said, you are mine. And he said, and when you pass through the water, look, oh, this is my favorite scripture. We're gonna break this down, mother. He said, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. I'm trying to give you the reason why I'm praise. He's letting you know, as his child, you're going to have some situations that look like they're going to drown you. You're going to have some situations in your life going to look like it's too big. It's bigger than you. There's going to be some situations where y'all see water, and you know the water is very boisterous, and the water is splashing, and, and, and it's going to make you nervous. He said there's going to be some things in your life that's going to happen that's going to seem like, why am I going through this? Look at the text. He said, I'm letting you know when you pass through it. So he already speaking to you that you go pass through it. I don't care what the doctor say. I don't care what man say. I don't care what they say on the job. He said, when you pass through. Oh my God. Did you catch it? He 
like they say you're going to pass through. But while we saying, oh no, this is too hard. He said, I'm trying to tell you, you can't go by what it looks like. You the reason you praise me, because your praise is going to take you into a place in me that I'm going to give you the strength. I'm going to give you the ability to, to open up your mouth. I'm going to give you the power to go do what you can't go do in the natural. Your praise is going to cause you to be hidden in me that the enemy ain't going to find you. Your praise is going to cause you to be in a place where it seems like you're overwhelmed, but I'm going to cover you and you ain't going to see everything that's coming at you. That's why we got the purpose. He said, because when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And then he's going to come back around again and bring it to us again, mother. He said, and through the rivers, they will not overflow you. So you're going to pass by some things. And it's going to look like you got water all the way up here. Go say, I can't breathe. It seems like I can't breathe. But you're going to have to remind yourself, God, you are with me. I thank you, Jesus. The Bible said that everything that has breath, praise the Lord. And you know how you got to get on your tippy toes. God, I thank you. If I can't knock the wind out of it, but God, I thank you. You said you would make a way out of nowhere. You said that you're not big on. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, thank you. And you got to understand when you say, you got your eyes closed. He ain't in all the way here. But I'm saying, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And you got your eyes closed. And now don't understand God has moved you from there to over here. Your blessing is every door. See, your praise takes you into an invisible dimension that your natural mind don't understand. He says, so you're going to pass through the rivers. And they will not overflow you. <laughs> Look, he still ain't finished with us, mother. He said, and then they will not overflow you. He said, but then you're going to walk through the fire. How much? Shit? The fire, what does the fire represent? The fire represents a place of purification. He said, there's some things on the inside of you that I got to burn it up. There's some things on the inside of you that I got to kill. There's some things on the inside of you. I got to destroy it. Jesus did. 
did something that he didn't like. He said, I'm going to betray him. I'm going to go and turn my back on him. The moment you do something that somebody don't like, those are the moments the enemy will come in and come in their mind and talk about you. The very person who you help or turn around and put the tap in their hand and say, I help you kill him. I help you set him up. I help you take him down. I help you. Because they said something I don't like. They did something I don't like. But you forgot about when I fed you. You forgot about when you lost your mind. And I was there to help you. You forgot about it when I prayed all night long with you. You forgot about it when you went through with your marriage. You went through with your wife. You went through with your children. You forgot about that. But now you want to kill me. Because I said no. You want to kill me. But you don't like what I said. Tell me how to read and praise the Lord. He said, Then I tell you, I'll be with you in the midst of the fire. He said, But you will not be burned, nor will the flame burn you. He said, But I am the Lord your God. If you look at the word Lord, Lord is capitalized. Let me tell you who that is. Say Yahweh. Yahweh. Who is Yahweh? Yahweh is the God of Israel. He's the God of the children of God. He is the life giver one. What do you mean? He gives life. So when you open up your mouth, hear me. When you open up your mouth, God said, I'm going to tell you who I am. He said, I am the giver of existence. I am the one to make the invisible visible. I am the one who will perform the promises. I am the unchangeable one. I am the one. I am the one to make a way out of nowhere. I am the one. That's why you praise me. Because you understand that can't nobody do it but me. He said, that's why. The doctors will give you a death sentence. And I'll make the doctors look like a fool. I'm the very one. When they say, ain't nothing going to feel them. You look at that, the product of a drunk and a go-go dancer. When people call me, they say, I ain't going to be nothing. Say, I'm going to be like my daddy. I'm going to be like my mama. That when God got a purpose, he said, I am the one. We'll make a way out of nowhere. I am the one. I call you out of East Wind. I call you out of A Street. When they say, can't nothing good come from East Wind. God said, I put my name on you. I'll put my oil on you. And don't know which to tell them. Devil in hell. Cause stop what I'm doing. Yes, my God. That's who Yahweh is. It don't matter. You're looking at a pot, a couple of go go taps in a drunk. Because said, I got purpose for her life. So no matter what the witches and the warlocks say, no matter what they do, but when I serve Yahweh, Yahweh said, I hear the righteous prayers of the righteous, and they obey the much. You got to understand, you praise him, because you know who he is. Then when you say, can't nobody do it but you, can't nobody protect me but you. Can't nobody heal me but you. Can't nobody take care of me but you. Can't nobody rock me in the right time but you. Can't nobody take care of me but you. Can't nobody take the little money I got and take care of me but you. Can't nobody make me happy but you. Everybody walk away from me but I'm still happy but you. Cause I know who he is. Cause he's the performer. Cause I know. I know that I know that I know. He is faithful. I know he's a good father. But my mama ain't here. My daddy ain't here. He takes better care of me than they ever could take care of me. My God is a good God. He takes care of me. He supply all my needs. It ain't nothing that I lack. It ain't nothing that I want. That he don't give me. I got a reason. I got a reason to praise him. You got to know who you belong to. He said, but I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel. He said, I'm your Savior. Why did God specify? Because there's many gods out here. You know what? When I was studying this morning, God said, you know what? 
He said, you got to make sure you explain this to me. He said, the reason why I'm telling you who I am, he said, because do you not know to God, the devil, and these other false gods here on earth, he said, God said, I don't even look at them. He said, I'm the only God. He said, I'm the only one. He said, when y'all sit up here making these witches and world are bigger than me. He said, you are insulting me. He said, because I told you, where they were when I made the earth the six days. And on the seventh day, I rest. And you sit up here talking about what these devils said. You talking about what these people said. He said, I am the Alpha and Omega. I am the beginning and the end. He said, I'm so bad, I'm telling you to end from the beginning. I already let you know you already here. I already let you know you deliver. I already let you know you're going to make it. You just got to work the middle. What does work in the middle mean? Work in the middle means I got to go through. That means I got to go through the suffering. I got to go through the pain. But you got to have a knowing that he is there. You gotta have a knowing when you're going through warfare, but he is there. You gotta have a knowing that you're knowing that he is there. He said, that's why I am your savior. He said, I have given Egypt as a rat, cush, and saber in your place. Jump to verse 10. This right here where he can be beginning to bless me. He said, you are my witnesses. Y'all help me, Jesus. He told me to tell you. He said, I got it looking ugly. I got it looking crazy. I got people on gave up on you. People on counted you out. I got what the doctor on said, everything they got to say. He said, but I'm telling you, you are my witnesses. What is a witness? You already got a testimony that we win. He said, you are my witnesses. I already told you the record. He said, I'm telling you to testify. Your evidence. What is your evidence? The evidence is the word of God. Your evidence is the praise. Oh, here. Your evidence. Thank you, Holy Ghost. He said, your evidence is the praise. What you need? He said, when you pray, he said, believe and receive uh, that it's already done. Uh, so why can't you be praying to God like you lost your mind? Because uh, he told me it's already done. Uh, it's already done. Uh, I ain't got to see it. Uh, he said, if I, you are my witness. Uh, you my witness uh, that I already did it. Uh, you my witness uh, that I already worked it out. Uh, you my witnesses. Uh, you my witnesses. Uh, that's why you got to pray. Uh, you are my Yeah. Listen, I got it like that because the devil said she ain't gonna do nothing. Look at her history. Didn't nobody do that. So the devil already painted a picture to us. But God says she's my witness. Because I'm going to give her the right information to get. I'm going to give her the right information to learn. And she's going to speak against the opposite of what she saw all her life. Because I'm a witness of God. Okay, let me ask this. Do you think that God is going to have us looking like a fool that's going to bring him Going to bring him shine? So why do we be moved when all the odds are stacked against us? We are here. Why are we moved? We're moved because we're looking at what they said. God said, you don't go by your flesh. Can I tell y'all, get flesh this piece of meat or something else now. I love my flesh, but it'll flip the strip on you. It'll mess you up. The enemy will come and start talking that crazy stuff to you. Your flesh will go on. I might well die. I might well give on up. Now you just prayed the Lord 20 minutes ago. Now you sitting up here. I can't do it. Mercy God. Oh God, it's too much. Oh God, I take one step forward and I might take two steps back. You sitting up there on curse yourself based on what your dead piece of meat feel like. Come on. And God said, wait a minute. I ain't said nothing about that piece of meat. I told you to get in the spirit and you tell that flesh, shut your mouth. You're not going to go for tell them, sit down somewhere. You better tell them to sit down somewhere. You don't have nothing to say in this equation. You got to talk to it. That's why you praise God. Because that praise is going to put that flesh upon the church. Yes, 
You'll say you tired, but maybe you'll start praising God. And you'll try to sit down and got to get on the You'll be in bed sitting down praising God. You got to get on up. You got to understand praise will arrest this flesh. Come on. And God said, This is the reason why you praise him. He said, Because you are my witness. See, when you look at court, they say, I got witnesses stacked against this person to prove that they're lying. So God's saying, I'm bragging on my children because they are my witness of proving I am who I am. Did you hear me? See, the odds were stacked against me because of what I came from on my mama's side, what I came from on my daddy's side, the odds were stacked against me. But when I got in my word, I began to get a new identity. So when my mama's side and my daddy's side told me, don't nobody want me, don't nobody love me, mother, he said, I love you with an everlasting love. I said, oh, he loved me. He said, I love you even when it don't even feel like I love you. Yeah. See, we so used to that love that I got to give you a box of candy on Valentine's Day. Now you think I love you. Now I understand I hate your guts, but I just did that to get what I want to get from you. Come on here. But God said, I love you when it feels like I don't love you. I love you when ain't nobody there, I still love you. I love you when people hate you, I still love you. People talk about you, I still love you. People turn their back on you, I still love you. I love you and my love ain't based on your feelings. Right. Come on. Yes. But I feel. I just feel like you don't care. I just feel like, hey, God love me. Why am I going through this? You're going through this because you're his witness. You know what I mean? We don't join a body and don't understand our benefits, mother. We sitting up here talking about we join the body of Christ but don't understand. We got to go through warfare. We got to get hum humiliated. The cross brings three things. Humiliation, suffering, and persecution. Jesus became a curse, but you would experience this from church people. The church people is the one that brought him persecution. The church people is the one that brought him suffering. The church people is the one who brought him humiliation. So some of the very things that we think that the church is supposed to be open receiving us but that false church is the one that does this, but they mingle in with us. But you get the praising, because I can be standing next to an enemy, but I get the praising, and you don't even understand that praise get that praise get to deal with them, they'll get up and have to move away from you. You'll get the praise of God, they'll get up and leave the church. Because they don't want that, that they feel the breakthrough that's taking place in your life, they'll get up and leave because they don't like what God is doing to you. That praise will cause a family member to turn on you. That praise will cause the very person that said, I love you, and then turn around and say, you ain't no child of God. I'm trying to show you where we at. He says, so look here in verse 16. He says, so here, thus says the Lord God, he said, which make it a way. Oh, oh, come now, he's trying to blow your mind again. Look what he said, mother. He said, thus says the Lord the Lord is all capitalized. I'm trying to show you there's different names to God that do what he do. So when he want to create something, this is what he said. So this is the creative spirit of God. So he creates when you work, when you speak, and when you praise. It causes angels. They start doing the work what you speak. So listen to what he said. He said, thus says the Lord. So in other words, he said Yahweh, the one who creates, the spirit of God that creates. Who makes a way through the sea, Angie? Now, do anybody know? Can you tell me how do you make a way in a sea? <laughs> how do you make a way in the ocean? Can anybody tell me? Now you understand why your praise is praise. Because your praise begins to cause the created portion of God. He said, I would take the foolish things to define the why. Because the Bible says when Moses began to lift up his rod, come on here. The Bible says the sea began to depart. Mm -hmm. And God said, when you open up your mouth and when you start praising God, it start causing areas in your life where you've been felt like you was drowning. Areas in your life where you've been feeling like you're going to lose your mind. He said, I will make a way of escape for you. I will make a way out of no way for you. When it seems like it ain't no way. And like you walking through a wall and then all of a sudden 
Father, just break open for you. It's where your imagination, you know you're going to walk into this world, but you're saying that it's going to open up because of who I am. Walls of situations in your life that you felt they were in. Walls in your life that you felt like it wasn't going to turn around. He said, but if you begin to start pricing me, and you be intentional when you price at me, that wall will open up a way of escape for you. Oh, God. Well, why would God do that for you? Well, do your mom do stuff for you? Did your dad do stuff for you? Yes. So why wouldn't your heavenly father do the same thing? See, God's trying to show us we really don't know him because you try to say, God, don't you see that this is wrong? You don't think he knows that this is wrong? You don't think that what the doctor said to you, you don't think that God knows that that's a mountain? You don't know all the all, all the debt that you in. You don't think that God knows that that's a wall for you. But God saying, take the limitations off of me. Praise me and believe me to break it. Praise me and believe me to make a way in the sea for you. Praise me and believe me when they say no, we ain't got no position for you. And believe me, God will call the very I can tell you, my ex-husband. They said they have a job for him. I said, I know what God said. I said, I tell you what. He said, You you said that they, they were gonna hide me and God and I called them people, they said they ain't got no position. I went back to press. Now God, you said that this job was his, and they told him no. God said, Didn't I tell you that job was his? He said, just like how that lady told him no. He said, She's gonna call him back in a couple of hours and get him a job. I said, on the same day. He said, on the same day. A couple of hours later, three to four hours later, the same lady that told him they didn't have a position for him is the same lady that told him we got a job. Tell me, I hope he got a make away out of no way. And all of a sudden, I got ready to get paid, and my check was gone. Oh, boy. I'm up here. I'm going to shut the door now. And I said, oh, you don't live for my money. You don't took my check. Oh, I'm going to call them people. And they sit up there going to tell me, uh, you ain't been made out. I said, wait a minute. I gave y'all the, the information out of the bank account, and you didn't take the money out. Well, you were supposed to call them. I said, I gave it to you all. Make a long story short. Well, I said, well, what do I need to do to get my money? No, we, 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 can't, we can't change it. I said, oh, the devil. I said, hold on for a minute. I said, oh, the devil is a lie. I ain't finna read this mess. Oh, you think you finna take my whole check? I said, how do I go to the legal? How do I go to pay my bills? You think you finna take all my money? I said, oh, the devil is a lie. I said, oh, God, you better trust somebody. God, let me talk to the right person. So the lady said, I'm sorry, man. I hung up the phone in the face. <laughs> I said, God, forgive me for doing it. I'm calling back. Let me speak to the right person. Got somebody on the phone? Man, I'm sorry. The gun is here is already, so we estimate we're gonna take about six of your chick, mother. You talking about somebody who look crazy. <laughs> I said, I cannot accept that. Let me talk to your boss. You talk to the boss. Let me talk to the person over you. My God. Hold on. I said, God, what they going on? God, you give it to the mind. I find a paper spirit that said, No, I am your child. I pay my tithes and offerings. You said you're rebuking the fire on my behalf. You said you'll fight this battle. And God, I'm believing you to work this thing out. I said, because I need my money. And you take care of me. I said, I'm going to help do what I'm going to do in the church. And you said, and these folks don't and took my money. You know that this is a disgrace. So they put the next person on the phone. And they said, well, this check here. I said, let me tell you. I said, well, I understand. Wait a minute. Let me tell you what I do. I said, all the money is in the account that y'all are supposed to be taking out. I said, I'm going to send that to you all right now. And y'all just took my check right now. I said, so now let's bring it back to making the original payments. And y'all taking the payments out like how we agreed upon. But my next check, y'all don't mess with it. They said, hold on. I start praying in the Holy Ghost. I start saying, thank you, Jesus. 
Oh God, thank you. Oh God, thank you. Now I flesh, now you know these folks ain't fucking trying to you. <laughs> now you know y'all gone where they already told you no. You send a people talking to these folks, wasting your time. They're gonna flesh it. Shut your mouth. God, I thank you right now, God. They're gonna rule in my favor. The person came back and said, We're gonna agree to your terms. Too many times we give up easily because people say no. You got to know what God says because you are his witnesses. So it has to look ugly. So God is saying, I will make a river in the sea for you. He said, I will make a way in the sea in a path in the mighty waters. So in other words, he said, I'm gonna just do this. I'm gonna just do this. I'm gonna just drop it on you, mother. You're gonna be at the grocery store and I'm gonna just make a way. You're gonna be at work, I'm gonna just make a way. You're gonna just walk around cooking. He's gonna just make a way for situations that you've been believing him for. So when you praise him, you pray to him. See, I'm trying to, I'm trying to stay up there, but he put me down. He said, because when you praise him, Angie, you got to have an image on your mind. He said, because every image that you have on your mind, when you praise me, that's what I'm going to give you. Did you hear me? That's why I said in Genesis, God said he created us what? In the likeness, in image, he created us. So when you got the image on your mind, you are showing him what it is that you believe in him for. How can God believe me to work out a situation with my family member if I don't ever put the image in my mind? How can God work it out for my children if I don't ever speak it out of my mouth and if I don't ever put the image in my mind? So when I'm praising God, you got to put the image on your mind. And you start praising God and you're thanking God for the image. Because you show, because where is God? He's on the inside of you. What is, what is God? He's a spirit. He's a spirit that uses your mind. So your image is the location. So if I'm praying to God for the house, the house got to be already in my mind. If I'm praying to God for the car, the car is already on my mind. If I'm praying to God for my spouse, my spouse is already on my mind. See, other people just pray to God, they're praying to God. Ain't nothing on your mind. Then we tell us from what God they move. How can God move, Angie, when you put no image in our mind? You see, we got to know what we're doing. It's a reason why you praise. But you got to have the right image in your mind. Remember my son telling the test. And they said, oh, he ain't going to pass. He ain't going to pass. I pray God, yes, he will. Yes, he will. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, he will. He's the other family member. He ain't going to do it. Yes, he will. Thank you, God. Do it for my child. Do it for my child. He did it. See, we listen to what other people say. And God said, I put you. You are my witness. And what one child do when, when a label's going to be a major race? And they're like, well, why would they open up something when they ain't got no major race? God, I forgot you do it. You do it for your name's sake. Y'all don't think our words don't create. It wasn't no major race. They ain't had none in what, five, ten years? I said, but God, we want to see a major race. And I said, you do it because of who we are. You know what the band director said? He said, we'll do it because of who Ricky is. In other words, when I first met the band director, he said Ricky couldn't catch on. He said it was going to be too much for Ricky. So I had the doctor to say everything that they do, he going to do. Oh, thanks for the man. Oh, yes, he going to do it. He wanted to quit. No, you ain't. He going to do it. You going to do it. You going to do everything that these other people do. And because the band director saw him overcome issues, it opened up the door for his sister. What are you overcoming for your sister and your brother? What are you overcoming for your mom and your dad? What are you overcoming when they can step in and it be neither for them because you don't made a way out of no way? See, now people ain't family like that no more. They all fuck me and my fuck. No, that, that, that's not kingdom. Kingdom, we make a way for other people. He says, so I will make a way in the waters. Look at verse 
verse 17, mother. He said, which bringeth forth the chariot and the horses. The army and the mighty man. They will lie down together and not rise again. They have been quenched and extinguished like a wick. You know what he's telling you? And I'm going to deal with the enemies. Yeah. He says, you praise me. I'm going to deal with the chariot. I'm going to deal with the horses. He said, and the army and the mighty man. He said, they will lie down, mother. I'll make your enemy lie down. I'll make them lie down and not rise again. They're going to get up and do some witchcraft. And God say, say, sit your tail down now. Now some of them sit up here laying. Oh, I'm wrestling with pain. Oh, I couldn't get up. God said, sit your butt down. Open up your mouth. Speak and stuff against people. No, I'm going to let you stay down there so you can think. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes. Oh, and they sit up there at home sick. Oh, God, I couldn't get up. Not understanding. Because God said, you think God going to keep on letting you mess with his children? And, and, and I ain't going to deal with you. He's going to deal with these people. I keep telling people the expiration date is up. I ain't never seen no milk good in this day. The milk ain't good for just 30 days. Come on here, brother, with that. After 30 days, the milk starts falling. You got to understand. We are seeing it falling. The expiration date is up. The days of these witches and stuff keep doing what they do. Take over your life. Oh, so and so gone, so and so on lost their mind. So and so struggling. So and so sick. So and so having a bad time. So and so. You'll get up in the morning and pray an evil demise to somebody else. When God said you can't even control your own life. Right. Come on, right. 
You get up in the morning to try to control my life, but you can't even control your own life. You get up and try to speak pain in my life, but you can't stop the pain in your own life. You try to cause pain to my marriage, but you can't stop the pain in your marriage. You get up and try to mess with my children, but you can't control your children. God said you're dealing with a sick-minded people that trying to control somebody else when they can't even control their own life. This is why they try to hide. This is why they try to wait till night time and want to get up and speak and not understand that you God got some real prophets for real. Because when we hear your conversation, we hear what you're saying. Call yourself speaking into the fire. Not understanding you're speaking into strange fire. But God say, I'm the one that won't blow out every counterfeit fire. I'm the one that blowing out every counterfeit boo. I'm the one blowing out all these false prophecies. You sit up your proper line and God say, I ain't talking to you in years. Talk about the Lord who gave you a word. The Lord ain't going to give you no word for me if he can't give you no word for you. Amen. 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 Lord, don't do my prophecy no harm. How you going to say don't do no prophecy no harm? God tell you, you need to forgive your brother and he is you can't forgive your brother, but you going to say God gave your word for me. See, we're out of order. And we go to churches where people let us be out of order. We don't want, we, some people are unteachable. And God say, I give you gifts, fivefold gifts, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the edifying of the church. To build the church. When you break it down in the Hebrew, it says for constructive criticism. So that means you got to put on your big girl drawers. You got to put on your big boy drawers. Because there's going to be some things that's going to be said to you that you don't like. We don't got so dysfunctional. We don't want nobody to correct us. We don't got so dysfunctional. We Nobody can tell us nothing. He is you going to walk into a mad truck and you tell him, let me walk in it. Let me do what I want to do. You are ignorant and you are foolish. God said, I gave you a gift, but you don't want me. Deal. You want to do it your own way. And guess what? God said, I'm going to let you go. This is why you got a lot of people walking down the reprobate mind. What is the reprobate mind? Knowing to do right, but you do wrong. And God said, I'm going to let you walk in a certain Because you are disobeying me. I tell you to praise me and you tell me you don't feel like it. I tell you to get up and worship me and you tell me I've been working all night long. That's disobedience. Well, God, I wasn't talking to you. I was just saying from the praise and worship leader. God said they standing as if they was me. Uh oh. You think God's going to come out of heaven and do it for you? He's going to use another human being. I went to, I'm just saying, why I got to listen to them? God said, because that's my order. You don't go and tell Burger King. You may tell them what you want on your walk, but you don't tell them how they tell you this is the burger, they tell you this is the bun. You don't go and tell them, give me what McDonald's got. Because they're going to tell you we don't do that. The church is the only place I've seen that want to tell God how to run his body. Paul said that we is God's bride. And if you are God's bride, why are you telling him how to run his marriage? We almost did Isaiah 43. There's so much nuggets in here. Look at verse.
In other words, people who connected to you that ain't even saved. Just because God bless you, God will bless them just because they connected to you in this dry place. You may got a, a, a person who helping you that ain't saved. And God said, I bless them just because they were helping you. He said, because, he said, and because I have given waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my chosen people. Say, I'm God's chosen people. The people whom I form for myself. Y'all see that? That's Yahweh. He said, I form you for myself. He said, and I will declare my praise. Uh-oh. See how your praise, your praise is so important. He said, I will declare my praise when you start praising me because of the impossible. I will de declare my praise because of the hardship that you've been going through. God said, I will move on your behalf. I want you to jump down to verse. Twenty-five. He said, I, even I, am the one who wipes away your transgressions for my sake. In other words, he said, as you praising me, suppose somebody said, God, there's some stuff I did that ain't, and this thing ain't following me. Y'all, because you know, sometimes we get in trouble sometimes. And he said, God, my name been scandalized. My name been talked about. He said, I will even wipe away your transgressions for my sake. So if you put that on my, your mind and say, God, I'm praising you. Thank you for cleansing my name. Thank you, oh God, for giving me of my name a new aroma. Thank you right now, God, for you working it out. Doors are opening up for me. Thank you right now, God. My name is moving from the bottom to the top. Thank you, God, for people who see me how you see me. Thank you, God. He said, I will move away the stain that man put on your name. He said, but put me in remembrance, Angie. What do remembrance mean? You got to tell him you know his law of sins. Put me in remembrance. In the way that ends, let us argue together. Yes. I can argue with God? Yes. 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 God, you said in your word if I confess my sin. You said in your word if I forgive. You said in your word if I believe in your word. You said if I got the faith the size of a mustard seed. You said for me to walk by faith and not by sight. You said if I call upon your name. You said, oh God, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor the seed begging bread. You said, if I pay my tithes and my offering, you said you'll rebuke the devourer. You said you'll make a way of escape for me. You said you'll be a river in the midst of a desert. You said you'll be a river in the midst of a sea. You said, I'll I walk through the fire and the fire won't burn. You said, you got to let him know what his word says. So he can move. And that's why he said, let us argue together. Yes. That means go back and forth. That means you keep spitting out what, what your word said. This ain't no one time thing. Because when you fight somebody, you don't just fight nobody and walk off. You fight until you win. Right. So he said, let us reason together. I like this part here. He said here. He says, state your case, mother, that you may be proved right. Put me in remembrance. Let us contend together. And he said, and let us, and, and, and one version say, let us go to court. The court means go to the courtroom of heaven and you begin to speak to God with what his word says. In my closing, the Bible say in Dame 3, 3, Write that down. We're not going to go there, but I'm going to just tell you. And Daniel 3, you got to understand, this is where King Nebuchadnezzar, he had, when he played certain music, when his image was put up, everybody was supposed to bow at the image. Because the Shadrach, Meshach, and the Bidigo, they was children, they were governors of God. And somebody was watching them. And they say, these people who you got in leadership, when the image, y'all, y'all, I want you to go back and read it. It's like when the image is being played, they don't bow. 
So the king went and brought Shadrach and Meshach and he put up the image. And he said, y'all bow like everybody else bow. And they said, no, no will we bow, no will we worship your God. And so the king got real mad at them. And the king said, I want you to throw them in the furnace. He began to tell the people, his servants, he said, make the furnace ten times higher than what it normally be. The Bible said the furnace was so high, the people who turned the fire, the furnace up, they died. It was just that high. And the Bible said, the king told them, y'all got to go in the fire. What am I trying to prove to you? I'm trying to prove to you, God put us in a difficult situation because you're a witness. We keep thinking that God ain't going to let you go through this. Look, God ain't going to let you go through that. God ain't going to let me be sick. God ain't going to let me go through no warfare. God ain't going to let me come against me. God, I'm going to read your Bible. <laughs> so here it is. God telling them. I mean, they, they begin to tell the king, no when we worship your God is. So the king said, y'all go get in the furnace. The Bible said, the king was curious. He began to get down in some kind of way and look. He wanted to see the people being burned up because they told him, we ain't going to serve you. They gone. And you know what they say? They say they put a demand on their God edge because they knew they was a witness. They say, our God going to deliver us. Now y'all know we would have been saved. God won't deliver me before I go on that fire. <laughs> that's what we would have said. Oh, they can never go to that fire. That devil is a lie. That's what we would have said. But they said, we want to walk to the fire. Because they say God is going to deliver us. The Bible said they walked in the furnace. And they said, when the king looked in them, he said, then we put three people in there. He said, look like I see four people in there. And the fourth person looks like it's a son of man. You don't hear God trying to show out and show out. That's why you praise me. I'm giving you a reason to praise me. You're going to walk through. you got to go through. He said, because I'm giving you a reason to praise. Because your praise is releasing the supernatural power of God to work on your behalf. Yes, yes, yes God, yes. Thank you, Jesus. So say I'm a witness. I'm a witness. You got to understand suffering ain't going to be long. Stand up. Say my suffering ain't going to be long. Do y'all know one of the fruit of the Spirit is long suffering? So that means suffer long. So if you know you've been suffering long and you've been suffering the right way. God, I've been praising you in the midst of this suffering. God, I've been thanking you in the midst of this suffering. God, I've been glorifying you in the midst of this suffering. God, I've been helping people in the midst of this suffering. I've been encouraging people in the midst of this suffering. You got to understand. He said, those that suffer with me shall reign with me. And he told me to tell you, this is your season of reign. This is your season of reign. Can I tell you? See, y'all gotta know how to get excited if you don't. Didn't I just tell you you his witness? So if you his witness, if he say you writing, you get excited, make yourself praise him. Give us some music, Ricky. Make yourself give us that CD later. Uh, later. You gotta know how to praise him because I'm his witness. You gotta know how to praise him because God allowed this and I'm coming out of this. You gotta tell the situation, right? You did this, but you can't burn me. God let me walk through the waters. You can't drown me. God allowed you to do this, but you can't stop me. Cause I'm his witness. I got a reason to praise him. Cause God doing something new. God is doing something new. God said, This is the kingdom age. It ain't going to all just gonna use the leaders. God said, I'm gonna use the lay people. I'm gonna use the kindergartens. I'm gonna use your fire. You don't think God ain't gonna use no baby? Sit up the cemetery somewhere? If he can die, get no understanding of angels or start coming in and start slaying all kinds of demons. Cause he's an Leave the baby alone. The baby that won and intercede on your behalf. Yes. 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 That's why we pray. Pray! 
out here and I pray that miracles are taking place. But you won't know this if you don't know the benefit of praise. That's why nobody ain't got to pump me up. That's why nobody ain't got to tell me to praise God. Because I'm praying to him intentional. Because it looks like I'm in the midst of the fire. But the fire came off me. I'm in the midst of the fire. But it came off me. And for you praise him. Because you understand. You the creator. You praise him. So that everything. That has breath. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Shout. Can I tell you, when you don't feel like praising, that's your time to praise. When your body racking with pain, that's your time to praise. When you tired, that's your time to praise. Can you hear me? When you tired, that's your time to praise. God just showed me a deposit just finished because I'm out of bank account. All those up to it, I'm going to pray this for it. See, I'm praying with it. You ain't got to feel it. It's according to your faith. Do you believe? Do you believe? Do you believe? That's for me.
Shut the light. 